Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, then welcome. Before we start, I just want to make a quick disclaimer that I'm not a specialist in mental health or anything like that. If you need help, then you should definitely seek a professional. I am, however, a specialist at myself, and these are the things I've learned over the past several years that I wanted to share. There's also so much more to self-love than what I'm going to share. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. When it comes to self-love, you probably hear a lot about self-value and self-worth. But how do you really know your self-value and self-worth? How do you determine it? There really isn't a right or wrong answer here, but there are some really important and essential aspects that play a big part in it, which is this question I want to ask you. Can you tell me about yourself? Did that hit you? If not, then let me explain, and hopefully it does. Remember that being the question that we get asked so many times? Whether it be a casual setting, such as hanging out with friends, or a professional setting, such as sitting in an interview? It's a common question we get. The question that stomps a lot of us, if not all of us. And sort of makes us panic in our heads like, What? I don't know. Go ask my friends and family. They should know. Or like, Oh my gosh, I don't know myself. And the list goes on, right? And not knowing how to answer that question makes us give half-baked replies. And sometimes what we end up saying isn't who we are. This question is incredibly overlooked as we don't ever really apply it to ourselves outside of those environments and to self-love. But it's important because it helps notify us of something that we lack, which is knowing ourselves. After knowing ourselves, another essential thing that goes hand in hand with it is understanding ourselves. Knowing is the what aspect to who we are, and understanding is the why aspect to it. We all want to be understood, but nobody wants to understand others, especially ourselves. Do you pay attention to your mood? Do you know what mood you're in? Do you understand why you're in that mood? Let's say you're out on a nice hot summer day and you're going to go grab something to drink. You know that most likely what you're getting is cold, right? You understand your body will need something cold to cool down, right? Now you're probably thinking, duh, Ray, of course, what's the point? Before I answer that, let's make it a tiny bit more complex. On any given day, regardless of it's a nice, rainy, hot, or cold day, and let's say you take a trip to, hmm, I don't know, McDonald's, and now you want a drink, what would that be? Now, if you knew what you would have wanted right away, then that's nice. Good for you. I know I would have wanted a strawberry banana smoothie because I'm always in the mood for something fruity or tropical. That's just how I am. Now, if you had to think, then that means you didn't know. Hence, you didn't know about yourself. You didn't know and understand what mood you'll be in and what drink you wanted to get based on that. But that's perfectly fine. The fact that you had to think meant that you were trying to figure yourself out. Trying to figure yourself out meant that you cared about yourself. And that's self-love. The point is that we don't pay attention to these things to help us learn to love and care for ourselves. Perhaps because we often deem these details too minor. As a result, we overlook them. These were only minor examples, but you can apply them to more complex scenarios and figure those out so you can figure yourself out. How do you achieve knowledge and understanding of yourself, you might ask? If you didn't catch on already, it's by paying a lot of attention to yourself. You know, when there's a person who you really like, or you're in a relationship, you tend to pay a lot of attention to them, right? So you get to know them better. It's just like that, but with yourself. I hope that question of, can you tell me a bit about yourself, smacks you differently now. Now this next one is such a core to self-love itself, which is self-honesty. I know, I know, I know. Some of you may say, isn't self-love and self-honesty technically the same thing? Well, no, they're not. To make this all quick in a nutshell, let me ask you this. How do you love yourself 
if you're not honest with yourself. See? Different, right? In addition to self-honesty, there's also self-acceptance. You can't really come to terms and be honest with yourself if you can't accept that honesty first. You'll come to love yourself more when you're honest enough to tell yourself that you are not perfect and learn to accept that. Something that I've noticed is that a lot of people who are struggling with self-love are people who went through or are going through a lot of hard times in life, whether that be abuse, any form of shaming, bullied, etc. And I know it can be incredibly difficult to be honest with yourself and accept what you've gone through and your experiences, but I just want to let you know that it's okay to do so. If you haven't yet or you're struggling to do so, then I also want you to know that that's also fine. And that ties into another thing I want to mention, which is time. Give yourself some time with self-love. Just like being in a relationship with someone, you don't learn how to love one another overnight. At least for the most part. I know mine didn't. It builds up over time. As mentioned earlier, being honest with yourself and getting to know yourself also takes time. If you have had some bad experiences, then also takes time to heal. Lastly, I also just want to tell you that it's okay to let yourself be loved. Don't confuse it with being loved because they're very similar but different. Being loved is what others do for you. Letting yourself be loved is accepting and receiving what others do for you. In this case, accepting their love. I believe that self-love in its simplest form is having a healthy, loving, caring relationship with yourself. You are also your own partner. You should love yourself as you would love someone else, even if that means training one hand more than the other. Oops. I truly believe that in order to really love ourselves, we must first learn and understand more about ourselves. Self-love isn't something that we are born with. We are born wanting to be loved and loving others, but we don't really learn how to love ourselves. Self-love is like a skill, something you learn and gain through experiences. It's kind of like a game where you have to keep leveling up and doing certain things for your character to learn a new skill. I've learned a lot about self-love over the years, and even now I'm still learning so, so much more about it. With all that being said, I hope you all enjoy this video. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing. I hope this video helped. Whether you're struggling with self-love, wanted a little bit of a deep dive, or insights from another person. If there's anything you'd like to add or say, then leave that in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.